Welcome to Money Roots, the podcast where personal finance gets personal. Each week, Amy and her guests dig deep into the world of finance, making it more approachable and understandable for everyone, no matter where you are on your financial journey. From savings and investments to budgeting and planning, we'll bring you practical advice, inspiring stories, and expert insights. We believe that everyone has the potential to grow a healthy financial future, and we're here to help you nurture it. So whether you're a financial guru or just starting to plant the seeds of your financial knowledge, this is the place for you. Get ready to uncover the tools and strategies that can help you thrive financially. So without further ado, let's dive into today's episode of Money Roots. Hi, Money Root listeners. Amy Irvine here. It's been a while and I'm thrilled to be recording this podcast today. As it is, it's a, a Monday, May 27th, so it's actually Memorial Day, just a few days out before the podcast is going to be released. And I cannot believe how crazy May has been. I don't know if that's true for everybody listening, but I just feel like it went by in a whirlwind. We started the month out traveling back from Florida to to New York. And I was not in town for very long before I turned around and headed to Fort Worth for a conference with my peers. I was back for about a week and turned around and headed to a retreat out in Park City, Utah. I have some amazing things that I think you'll find interesting coming forward from that retreat. But for today, what I want to talk to you about is something that I find really important, which you may not at first think is financially related, but it is for sure. And that's about writing your story. When you think about a good movie that you really enjoy, it's a story that you can kind of see the twists and turns and you 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 really long for the hero in the story to succeed. You want a somewhat happy ending or at least reasonably happy ending. And what I found in many of the clients that I'm working with, and to be honest with you, sometimes even myself, is that I've let that story be written for me instead of writing the story. So I challenge you after listening to today's session to sit down pen and paper, and I do mean pen and paper, and list out a few things about you and your own story. Let's start first with what we call the hero. The hero of the story is something that you usually can identify pretty quickly off when you're watching a movie, but you are your hero and your story. So think of yourself that way. You're a character that is considered a hero. Now, the question is, who's going to be the villain? Who or what is opposing you, the hero, and getting you what you want? It could be your job. It could be You're not making enough money. It could be that your expenses are higher than your income. It could be retirement. It could be education for your children. There's lots of things that could be something that are getting in the way for what you ultimately want. And I know it seems odd that I say those things could be the villain, but in reality, when we don't know exactly what we're looking for, sometimes they can actually get in the way. So who or what is opposing you, the hero, and getting what you truly want? If you take some moments to sit down and think about that, just write words. Don't worry about what they are. Just do what I call a word dump. Because sometimes in those where we're actually just putting words on paper, the answer kind of comes out all by itself. So think about, I'm just going to go back. This is a character, aka the hero, you who wants something, a certain outcome. You encounter a problem and usually in the story, at the peak of despair, you have a guide come along. They step into your life and they give you some direction. They give you some education. They help you with the struggle that you're experiencing. I'd like to think we could be a guide in some of these situations, but regardless, Usually a guide comes along. It could be information you find in a book. It could be information you find online. Just be real careful about that because sometimes that information is real general, but it is a guide in some way, shape, or form. This guide gives you a call to action, something to do, something that will help you in your journey. All of these tips did not come from my brain. I have to give credit where credit is due, although I think it's true The book was actually written specifically for businesses around, 
defining their brand, the more I've thought about it, the more I've thought everybody has their own journey, their own brand, their own story. So anything that doesn't have a purpose in the plot that I just mentioned, then I would suggest perhaps cutting it out. Maybe it's just noise. Maybe it's something that you think you should be doing, but in reality, you shouldn't. Maybe it's something you should be doing. But as you always hear us say very often, don't shoot on yourself. It's dangerous because we don't know exactly what we should be doing sometimes. So an example of a villain or a distraction could be things like taxes, right? That could be something that we perceive as a villain. But in reality, if we're paying a lot of taxes, perhaps we're earning a lot of money, which could be a huge tool that we would be using in our lives. Here's some questions that I would suggest that you ask yourself as you're going through this exercise. And for any of you that want more information about this book called The Story Brand, which is where I got a lot of these ideas from, Donald Donald Miller is the author. So when we're thinking, as I translate some of the things that he taught us, or as I learned as I was reading his book, one of the key guides that we need to be, notice I use the word guide, is how do we help you financially thrive? That's often what somebody's trying to achieve. Now, what that financial thrive is could be very different for each person, but it might be things like, could we help you save money in some way, shape, or form because we identify something? Could it help you save time? That might be something that you're looking for. Could it help you feel nurtured? At Rooted Planning Group, that's one of the things that we like to spend a lot of time in digging into, you know, your values matching up to your spending. So maybe listening to what you want to be spending your money on and guiding you through the process of aligning that together with each other is what you're looking for. Is it possible that we could provide you with resources or increased productivity or maybe even, you know, assistance with finding great organizations that you can make donations or charitable contributions to? What is it that we can help you with to to provide you with the ultimate feeling that your money is matching up with your spending goals? How do we help you achieve your plan is one of the most important questions we should be asking you when you're working with us. And I suggest that when you write down to write your sit down to write your story, think about those key components that I mentioned. You being the hero, some sort of villain stepping in and getting in the way, encountering a problem, and then when you think that problem maybe can't be solved, who can you reach out to that could act as a guide? And how can that guide provide a call to action that ultimately helps avoid failure and ends your story in success, whatever that success is. But to determine that success, you need to know what is your story. And then you can cut out what are all of those items that get in the way of a good plot and leave them on the cutting floor. I hope you've enjoyed today's podcast. I know it's a little bit different than normal, but stay tuned for more thoughts around this particular topic. I think it's important that we dive into bringing more joy in our lives and how our money can support that. As I've always said, your life is about events supported by your dollars and cents. You've been listening to Money Roots, your go-to podcast for making personal finance accessible and approachable. Thanks for joining us today. Amy and her guests have enjoyed guiding you through the roots of your financial journey. Remember, whether you're planting new seeds of financial knowledge or nurturing the growth of your existing financial plans, Money Roots is here to support you every step of the way. Be sure to follow them on Facebook, X, LinkedIn, and Instagram for more resources. And of course, subscribe to Money Roots wherever you get your podcasts so you never miss an episode. A big thank you to the sponsor, Rooted Planning Group, for making this show possible. At Rooted Planning Group, they're committed to helping you cultivate a thriving financial future. Until next time, keep growing your money roots.